Good afternoon to you all and welcome to today's CSE National Tech Talk a webinar on the opportunities from student membership in CSE. Uh, we will try to highlight the many fun stuff available to CSE student members. Uh, this webinar is our first of the 2022-23 season. Uh, my name is Charles Darwin Anand. I am the past chair of the CSE Student Affairs Committee, and I'll be your host uh, for the next hour. The current chair, who is Alan Lloyd, uh, sends his regards, uh, but unfortunately he cannot uh, join us today. We do have a very busy hour planned, as you can see on this slide. First, the CSE Vice President Gopal will kick start the webinar by offering his greetings and then briefly introduce the CSE. Then the CSE Young Professionals Committee Chair Rami will come in and briefly describe their role in the CSE and how to transition from a student member to a young professional member. We'll also hear of the CSE student competitions from the competitions co-chair Ellen and Dylan. Um, I will take over to highlight some of the student activities that we can expect at the next CSE annual conference in Moncton next May 2023. Then we will try to answer some of uh, your questions about the organization, student membership, young professionals, and the CSE as a whole. And uh, we will wrap things up after that. Let's get right into it. It's now my pleasure to introduce the CSE Vice President Gopal, uh, who will offer his greetings and tell us what the CSE represent. So the floor is yours, uh, Vice President Gopal. Uh, please, please proceed. Thank you very much, Charles. On behalf of the Canadian Society of Civil Engineering, I welcome you all to this webinar. The CSE is a storied organization that was started in 1887. It has a 135 years history serving the civil engineering profession. The CSCE is a not-for-profit learned society that was created to develop and maintain high standards of civil engineering practice in, in Canada and to enhance the public image of the civil engineering profession. So these are the technical areas that CSC has. It is divided into technical areas, technical programs and, and divisions. You can see that there is, it has a very wide reach as, as far as technical areas go in, in trying to serve the profession. The CSC has six regions within CSC. It's got Atlantic, Quebec, Ontario, Prairies region, Western region, and international. It, each region has sections and chapters. For example, the Quebec region has, has Quebec section, Montreal section, and Sherbrooke section. Similarly, all other regions have sections and chapters. Each region has a vice president who represents the interest of the region in the CSC board. Sections are held by section chairs who report to the regional VP. Below each section are the chapters. In 2030, the CSC approved that the board approved the following three strategic directions, uh, growing the, the changing civil engineering communi community in Canada together. CSC supports and promotes equitable and inclusive initiatives within all areas of civil engineering activity across cultures, needs, ages, gender, and geographic regions. We are, we are trying to enhance the inclusivity of all engineers from young to senior engineers, increasing female, and, and diversity in civil engineering, mentorship, learning, collaboration between engineers of different levels and experience. The second strategic direction is promote promotion of civil engineering to all. And this is done by continuing to provide opportunities and, and promote civil engineering to students like yourselves and associates to gain access and ex to experience and help them all succeed. Leadership in sustainability practices for civil engineering through providing initiatives such as the infrastructure report card, envision a pledge sign at, at, at that triennial sustainability tools and so on and so forth. There's a lot of bullet points that we have that we are trying to cover within the strategic directions. So why CSC? CSC provides opportunities to learn and grow through the many webinars, short courses, the envision, national lecture tours, conferences. It's a very vibrant organization um, that's mean that serves the profession. So 
Uh, so I think provides a lot of opportunities to actually learn from, from the various workshops and courses that it provides. It allows you to connect with your, with your peers across the country and network with senior members in your profession. These network opportunities are invaluable and help in career progression. And finally, it provides opportunities to lead through chair positions of sections, chapters, regions, and so on. So it also gives leadership opportunities to, to students and, and people as, as, as they move through the ranks. I, I would urge every student to become a member of CSC and take advantage of the various opportunities that exist, as well as see how they can contribute to the organization. Like any other profession, there are rapid changes that are occurring in civil engineering. And we'd like to welcome people like yourselves with, you, with your enthusiasm and fresh ideas. That's my plug for asking you to join the CSC if you're not a member of it. If you are a member of it, we welcome your thoughts and ideas. With that, I would like to invite Dr. Mike Bartlett, fellow of CSC and the chair of the CSC's National History Committee to come and talk about CSC's historical achievements. Great. Thanks, Gopal, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. As said, I'm Mike Bartlett. I'm the chair of the CSCE's National History Committee. We're one of the very active committees on CSCE, and basically we commemorate significant historic civil engineering events and, and sites across Canada. So the two slides here, uh, the tunnel portal on the left of the upper slide is the 1871 St. Clair Tunnel between Sarnia and Port Huron, Michigan, which was constructed for the Grand Trunk Railway. Joseph Ahobson was the lead engineer for that. And the lower photograph shows us cheerfully unveiling a plaque in Montreal to celebrate the 1838 William Collector. So yes, the National History Committee puts plaques on historic sewers and other civil engineering infrastructure. So the uh, committee currently has about 27 members and all are very active. So you can see we've got some vice chairs, we've got a publication subcommittee that kicks in before the annual conference to review papers for the annual conference. We do things like commemorate historic sites at the annual conference. Many of our members are acting or retired bridge engineers, and so we've got a historic bridge task group that's very active. We have 80 plaques across the country, and we have members go and visit those plaques to make sure that they're still there and in good shape and coordinators of that initiative. We've got a poster display that travels the land talking about significant CSCE historic activities, and we create task forces to work with organizations like the American Society for Civil Engineers to create joint international historic civil engineering landmarks. Uh, the most recent one we worked on talked about the surveying and mapping of David Thompson in the Northwest of North America, which was quite remarkable achievements. And we're likely to be working on one next with ASCE that will look at the surveying of the Canadian US boundary. And finally, we have a tripartite webinar, CSCE, ASCE, and the UK Institute of Civil Engineers hold four or five webinars a year. The idea is that the topics of the webinar have to pertain to at least two of the three organizations represented. So the upcoming webinar, which Charles will tell you about, it features Alistair McKenzie talking about Thomas Telford, who's a very eminent British engineer, but Thomas Telford's influence on civil engineering in what was then British North America. One of the reasons for my plug right now is that the average age of the National History Committee is plummeting. We are eager to welcome student members to our group. So if you're interested, go to the CSCE website and click on history and you'll get my email address there. Please send me an email. Charles, I'll turn things back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of the CSCE Young Professionals Committee, Rami, who is also a senior bridge engineer with T.Y. Lane in Montreal. He's going to talk about opportunities the Young Professionals Committee has for young professionals and students. So the floor is yours, Rami, please. 
proceed. Uh, thanks very much, Charles. So well, the CSC has set up this YP committee, the Young Professional Committee. And the reason is because at one point we were all in your shoes as, as students and we needed to transition into the CSC as young professionals. And so what the, the YP committee does is try to make that transition smooth, try to bring things towards you know, what would be more relevant to students transitioning into young professionals. So some of the things that our committee does, so we're able to share experiences and ideas with uh, CSE young professional members all across Canada. And that's because our committee is comprised of members from all sections uh, all across the country. And that really provides a really great forum for sharing uh, amongst ourselves. There's opportunity to learn about the different events and, and ideas that people have all across the country. The YP tries its best to gain support from the national section and also local sections to push events that are tailored towards young professionals. And often that means students as well, things that benefit fit yourselves directly. And also the YP committee looks to provide feedback to the CAC executive as much as we can. How can we improve things? How can we, uh, for young professionals, what slight tweaks can we make that would improve the experience for, for us going forward? So we're, we're very active and, and trying to continue to improve the, the CSE uh, for young professionals. And so, like I mentioned, we have a lot of ongoing activities. One of the major ones recently has been helping to organize some of the national tech talks. In the past year, we had panel discussions on how young professionals can manage expectations, stress, and succeed, uh, which is a really, really big challenge for students transitioning into young professionals. We also talked about how to give excellent drawing markups, which was a really, really useful skill that's not always taught in school. And then in the coming year, we have a lot more great discussions planned. The next one's coming up in just next month. So please stay tuned to your emails to, to get updates on, on, the, on the topic. We also look at promoting local section events um, that are tailored to YP. So we work with the different sections to try to push for and, and help organize those local section events. And we also include some articles in the Canadian Civil Engineering Magazine. And those often pertain to young professionals and students. Some of the past topics are why risk is fundamental for civil engineering, challenge of transitioning from school to work, moving towards a more sustainable future. All of these are available in past issues of the Canadian Civil Engineering Magazine and continue to, to look forward to the new, the latest copies and as we'll continue to contribute in that facet. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun transition going from student to Y professional and uh, hopefully the, the YP committee can help make that smooth. Uh, thanks, Charles. Back to you. Thank you very much, Rami. It's now time to hear from the CSCE Competitions Co-Chair, Dylan and Ellen. So now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the CSCE Students Competitions Co-Chair. They are coming to speak about the Students Competitions that CSCE offers and how you can get involved as a participant and a volunteer. So now the floor is yours, Dylan and Ellen. You can take over and share your screen. I'm Dylan. I am one of the two co-chairs of the committee and also a past captain of Waterloo's Steelbridge team. I'm now working as a structural engineer in London, Ontario. My co-chair is Ellen. You can introduce herself. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ellen Chen and I have been involved in the Concrete Canoe Committee since 2015. I was also a past captain for the UBC Concrete Canoe team. And I, well, I hope I will organize the concrete canoe competitions. This past year, we were finally able to get back to one of our in-person competitions after, after a couple of years of just doing things virtually. And I just want to share some of the highlights that we have from last year in a small video. We have a video slideshow of, of here as well to show you a little bit of the details. Yeah, so our competition typically starts by students registering and then the following morning, uh, following day entirely really is the display day. 
This takes place with uh, steel bridge teams are subjected to aesthetics judging. It includes this year, there was the poster as well as the appearance of their bridge. And that's something that differentiates us from the American competition quite a bit, where they're much more focused on the load test, whereas we include that, but we also include kind of an architectural aesthetic component. The canoe teams also get judged on their displays, which you can see can be quite elaborate. <laughs> they also do some portions of the competition that involve, you know, concrete cylinders, density checks, kind of their product finish, as well as some weighing, all as part of that as well. And as you can see, we go around taking some nice photos of the teams so they have them for future competitions and for some good memories in there. And even though we don't really have any photos of the, of the presentations, they are one of the important components of the competition. So both Steel Bridge and the Concrete Canoe competitions have this as an activity. And they are opportunities for students to present about their canoe and highlight to the judges about what's special about their canoe and how they planned, designed, and constructed the bridge, each bridge and canoe. The second day of the competition on the bridge side is when our primary competition takes place. So as you can see here, this is actually Western's team last year constructing their structure, which I think they built in about five minutes. It's comprised of a bunch of modular pieces that all fit together. We time their construction, make sure they're not committing any accidents. But the competition itself is very fast paced. There's judges watching to make sure that everyone is actually following the rules and everyone is actually, you know, not dropping bolts, not stepping in the river, which are actual problems on real construction sites. We don't want people dropping things. And we don't want people, you know, stepping in rivers. After that, we go into the load test portion of the competition where we actually have various sensors set up that measure the deflections both laterally and vertically, which during the load tests are captured to then combine into a structural score at the end. During this, bridges are loaded with over 2,500 pounds of steel angles, which the teams themselves place on. And it's a, it's a pretty good workout. You can see too, we have some safety measures in there, uh, our lovely buckets, just in case any of the bridges collapse. Last year, there were no collapses. However, in previous years, we've had as many as a quarter of bridges collapse. And on the third day of the competition, this is definitely the most exciting part for the concrete canoe participants, where you finally get to test how your canoe performs in water. So we have um, a couple of different races. There are sprints for male and female, as well as slaloms, where you go around these different buoys to see how, they, how well they can turn, and also a group. As you can see, we have four people on the canoes. They also do sprints as well around the buoys, just in straight lines and with a couple of turns. So all of these together are ways to see how well your canoe can perform in the water overall from both not just speed, but also maneuvering and also how well your paddlers have trained over the whole year. It's always really fun to see how how your team has done and over the school year and also it's also a great chance to see how other teams have have done and how we can learn from them to do better next year and finally perhaps this is the highlight of the competition is that we do have a banquet at the end of the competition as a reward for everyone's hard work, we have awards for many different categories besides just the top three, because we want to you guys to know that there is a lot of value in many different categories and innovation, things like innovation and the spirit of the competition. These are all very important items as well. And we do want teams who are exceptional in these areas to be recognized. So that here we have just the, the winner of the Steel Bridge competition, University of Puerto Rico, and also the winners for the Concrete Canute competition, University Laval. And if this is something that piques your interest, first up, see if there is a Steel Bridge and Concrete Canute team at your school. And if not, if you and if you're feeling particularly motivated or ambitious, you can always look to start a team with a couple of friends. 
in terms of the competition for Steel Bridge, starting up a team here, if you are really interested in it, contact us too. We have lots of resources that can help you get started. Uh, many of us actually set up our own teams as well. So we have a lot of experience there that can help you get going. We're also going to be running a webinar on kind of, you know, good ways to structure a team and how to kind of schedule a team in, which will be taking place on October 1st of this year. And same for Concrete Can Do as well. Here's our email over here. If you ever want to know a little bit more about the competition and how to get involved, and you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram with our handle here on the screen. And we really look forward to yeah, seeing you at the competition. And trust me, it is lots of fun. And that is one of the, well, that's probably the main reason why uh, Dylan and I and many others who are volunteering on this committee have joined our teams throughout our entire undergrad school and now here as volunteers. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. And we do hope that you will, yeah, we hope that you will be able to get something valuable from participating in one of these teams. Thank you very much, Ellen and Dylan. I picked uh, two things from your presentation. It looks like students uh, participating in the CSCE activities, they are not only learning, but they are, they are, they are having fun as well. That's, 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 that's awesome to, to, to see. And the second thing that I picked up is that these competitions are international competitions because I, I heard that you mentioned a team that is not a Canadian school. So that's, that's also a very if, interesting if, thing to, to hear. If anyone here is from an international group and wants to join, we do have international chapters set up on the student side through the CSE, and we strongly encourage you to join. One year, we had teams from China and Puerto Rico and Mexico. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen and, and Dylan, for, for this interesting presentation. Now, we turn our, our attention to the 2023 CSE Annual Conference uh, that will be held in Moncton, New Brunswick. The theme for this conference is Changing Tides and Ingenuity. And um, I would like to highlight some of the things that we should expect during the conference. This is going to be in May, 2023. So the conference will be held after the Victoria Day weekend. So it's starting from the 24th of May to the 27th. Uh, the venue of the conference will be at the Delta Beau Sejour uh, Hotel. That is seen in the left-hand image on your screen. There will be a dedicated program for young professionals and students. And I can talk about this a bit. There will be the National Civil Engineering Student Capstone Design Competition. And also there is a student paper competition. There is always an awards banquet that, that is held at the end of the conference. And we will be announcing the winners of, we have the President's Awards for the Outstanding Student Chapters, the Capstone Design Project Competition, the winners will be, will be announced at the banquet. The Best Student Paper Awards will also be given at the, at the banquet. In the past, Yes, the winners of the Concrete Canoe and the Steel Bridge competitions were invited to the awards banquet to receive the awards. I believe that that's going to be the case uh, in Moncton as well. So it's not just the, the, the Concrete Canoe and the Steel Bridge competitions are not held during the annual conference, but then the winners of those two competitions are invited to attend the annual conference to receive the awards. So please take note of that as well. And in the conference itself, uh, there will be the general conference uh, with papers representing all the CSE technical areas and at least one civil engineering history session that Dr. Bartlett and his team organize. Uh, there will also be specialty conferences uh, dedicated to the five areas that you can see on this slide. We have the construction, the environmental engineering, uh, mechanics and materials, hydrotechnical engineering, and the structural specialty conference. 
Every student is, of course, welcome to submit a paper in the conference, and you can also enter the student paper competition. And the technical coaches of this conference is going to be Serge Desjardins and Gerald at uh, University de Montaigne. There is our website uh, for the conference uh, with all the pertinent information. Let me just uh, leave it up for a moment for those who wanting to take a screenshot so that you can check out details of the organization of the conference and what will be on offer. So looks like we are, we are doing very well with, with our timing. Now we have some time for our panelists to answer your questions. I remember at the beginning of the webinar that uh, Mike Bartley said that if you have a question, please use the Q&A uh, button and throw us your questions. Uh, we will be more than happy to, to respond to them. You have myself, the past chair of Student Affairs. Uh, you have the, the chair of uh, Young Professionals, Rami. You have the chair for the History Committee. Vice President Gopal is here and the co-chairs of the student competitions committee. So you have the entire team here. Uh, put, please put your questions at the Q&A session and we will pick it up one after the other. So I have a question. It says, can we have a quick summary of different committees that we can participate in? And I'm assuming that uh, it's, it's talking about about, about students. Uh, can students or do students have the opportunity to participate in committees in the CSCE? So I'll jump in right away. Student members are very welcome on the National History Committee. Uh, we don't have a large number, but the student members that we have worked with in the past have been very engaged. And I'm thinking particular of a fellow who graduated from Schulich last spring, but he lives in New Westminster, British Columbia, and is, among other things, madly in love with the Patalo Bridge. And so he and I worked together to produce a paper for the CSCE annual conference in Whistler about the history of the Patalo Bridge that was quite well received, actually. So sure, history committee, student members, very welcome. And I can just add to what, what uh, Mike was mentioning. There are numerous committees, programs, and divisions that CSC has, and we, and we welcome student members in each one of them. It's all clearly laid out in the, in the CSC website. If you go, there's a tab called Divisions and Programs. If you click on it, you will see the different divisions, different, and, and within that, the different chapters, the student chapter, the, the sections, regions, everything is laid out there and just find the right chair and send a note to the chair and, and be a part of it. We welcome involvement by students in each of these sections, divisions, regions, whatever level that you feel you can contribute. And, and, and areas also are, 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 for example, asset management and IT and innovation. And, and as Dr. Bartlett was talking about the history committee, just drop a line to the chair and, and you will see the ball roll from there. And uh, let me also chip in with this. The CSCE is, is closer to you than you think. Uh, we do have local sections and regions. So whether you are, you, are, you are on campus, whether you are at school or you are at home, you know, on vacation, CSCE is close to you. You can, you can always get involved. And I always encourage student chapters to take advantage of this. You can participate in, the, in your local section's meetings. And, and you're always welcome to do that so that you know what is going on. And this is a wonderful opportunity for you to, 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 to expand your network, you know, get to interact with, with practitioners. And it helps with your transition. It, it, it really does. So uh, I, uh, I would encourage you, you know, the student chapters out there, there is somewhere on the, on the CSE website, you can find which section your student chapter belongs to. You will find the, the chair of the section 
And once you see the, the neighbor of the chair of the, that's a contact there, uh, make contact with the chair of the section and say, how can we uh, be part of the section meetings and activities? And I'm sure they will welcome you with open arms. So please take advantage of this and expand your, your network, okay? So it says um, a grad student with architectural background in construction can participate, absolutely. I, I, it's absolutely one can participate and it's just a question of, you know, look at the construction division if that's what you want to do, send an email to the chair of the division and, and, and take it from there. Absolutely, you can participate. You're welcome to participate. Um, I think the networking opportunity that CSC provides is invaluable. You can network with across the country with various at, from, from with people, not only your, your uh, other students like yourselves, but also have like people who are a few years ahead of you, young professionals, as well as senior pro, senior people from in, in the profession. So that networking opportunity itself is worth quite quite a bit. Networking gets jobs, so that that might be one of the ways uh, segways for for somebody to find employment. Mike. Yeah. So I just wanted to underline the point that Charles and you are making about getting engaged at the section level. When I went to do my PhD at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, I realized there was a very active CSCE local section there, and I started going to meetings. And you know, if it was a structures presentation. I sat with a table of students and that was fine. We got to know each other. If it was a non-structures presentation, there'd be a table of structural engineers kind of at the back or these are the people who come to CSCE meetings, whatever the topic is. And I'd be sitting at the table of structural engineers. And so it wasn't instant, but in the course of two or three years, I got to know local people very well. I identified the two companies in Edmonton that I would be very excited to work with. I identified two other companies in Edmonton that I really didn't want to ever think about working with. Um, and one of the fellows who was there was just kind of, we would keep in touch base with each other, you know, uh, hi, hi, Bill, what's new? Oh, things are good. We're, we're busy. When do you think you might be done your thesis? Oh, I don't know, six months from now. Great. And so I walked out of finishing my graduate degree straight into a job. I think I took a week off as a, a holiday to, to celebrate the end of the degree. Lots of senior people remember how awkward it is to be a junior person. And so the people that are involved with CSCE tend to be very, very supportive of students. And I mentioned the, the Historic Bridge Committee. We've got a former chief bridge engineer for the province of British Columbia, who's the member of that committee. We've got several practicing engineers who are members of that committee. It's a former chief engineer of CN Rail is a corresponding member of that committee. And they're all there to be supportive. Yeah, and I can just add uh, to what everyone's saying. In addition to all the great advice that, that we've shared here, the YP committee is always trying to help to put out guides and, and try to create webinars and, and discussion points for how we can, you know, get jobs and, and things. And some of the upcoming webinars will, will have that uh, as a point of discussion. Some upcoming articles, I'm sure, will include some tips and pointers. Uh, so stay tuned and, and keep and, and if you ever have any suggestions for topics that you want the YP committee to focus on, I mean, that's always something that you can re feel free to reach out and help address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a question. I think uh, this, uh, I mean, this question has been answered. How would you recommend searching for an I EIT role while in the last semester it's getting engaged, right? Getting involved and, and you will get to expand your network and that will be, that will be done. So that's the, um, how PhD students can join CSC. I'll kick that off. The short answer is get engaged with your local section. When I started going to CSCE meetings in Edmonton, all of a sudden they said, we're looking for a graduate student rep on our section executive. Would you be willing to take that role? And I said, great, I'd love to do that. And so then in my graduate student role, I was able to encourage other graduate students to become student members of CSCE and so be eligible to attend local section events at reduced rates and other things. I don't know where the person who asked the question is from, but please 
go to the CSCE website and find your local section and contact your local section chair. I do have another question here, which says that I am a civil engineering student, but I have a lot of experience in computer science, computer security. Is there any crossover between the two, perhaps in infrastructure control systems? And if so, where can I get involved? So that's a very good question. Maybe I can take that, uh, Charles. Yes, please. That's a very, very good question. And this is what I alluded to in my in my talk that the, every, prof every profession is, is rapidly changing. Civil engineering itself is changing quite a bit with the introduction of computers and security issues and so on and so forth. So people like yourself, Sheen, I think this, these are, are especially welcome to the society because we would like to have that kind of uh, knowledge that you would bring to the table on how we can involve, we can we can evolve and and be better and better and provide better protection to the to to, to, to the community and society. So, absolutely, please feel free to reach out to the structures division or infrastructure division or or any 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 particular division and and then um, get involved with your as as uh, as was said earlier in with the local chapters as well as you can be a part of the national team. We are, we are in the process of starting a division in forensic engineering, a forensic division as they call it now. It's not formalized yet, but, uh, but that might be one of the things to, to think about, right? Just to underline Gopal's point, we also have an innovation and IT committee that, that exists and is quite active, and that might be another place for the questioner with that particular skill set to explore. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Can civil engineering technicians join CSE? The short answer is yes. Besides awards, competitions, uh, do the CSE provide scholarships to our student members? I think uh, Mike can take this. Yeah. So the, the one that I'm aware of there are interesting things that happen at, at uh, the section level. So there are some sections where student scholarships are organized, uh, but the, the main scholarship is actually a fellowship, the Donald Jameson Fellowship, and it's given to a graduate student studying structural engineering. And this past year, the award was $7,000. So that's a fairly substantial a fellowship. So yes, they are available. And again, if you go to the website and click on awards, you'll see the awards for career achievements and other things like that. But student awards are listed there as well. I'd also just like to chip in at the university level, as Mike mentioned, there are uh, smaller scholarship awards available for people who apply. There's usually an application announced by the student chapters. So if you want to just look up your local student chapters at your university and see if they have that, um, that is probably the quickest way to start. And they usually evaluate you based on participation and volunteering activities. So if that is something that you have been doing, that's definitely a scholarship to consider as well. Thank you very much, Ellen. And uh, the final question, um, how much does student membership cost? Presently, how much does it cost? And if the president elect, the vice president Gopal, can tell us something about student membership, I think uh, we will all be happy to hear that. So, <laughs> so thank you. I, I, I knew that question is going to come, and it's just a matter of time before that question shows up. So currently, the student mem membership is free. Uh, it it will be under review because CSC we have, because we have uh, you know a, a financial issues that we are that is being considered by the board, so um, it it might change over the period of time, but uh, right now um, it is it is free. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, panelists. It's been very very stimulating, very very educative. So now we will begin to, to, to wrap up. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank our corporate partners. Um, here are the, the logos of some of them. We really do appreciate their support to the, the operations of the CSCE. 
And here are the logos of the of the rest. We do appreciate their their support. The fall 2022-23 Tech Talk webinars uh, will run typically fortnightly until early December. Webinars are typically held on Wednesdays at 1 p.m., just like today, Eastern Time. Please take note of that, Eastern Time. Um, next week, we do have a special webinar in our Civil Engineering History Tripartite uh, webinar series. Uh, Mike spoke about that. Uh, we'll have Alastair McKenzie uh, speaking on Thomas Telford's influence in British North America. And as Mike explained, uh, these webinars are organized by the CSCE, uh, but in conjunction with the American Society of Civil Engineers and the UK Institution of Civil Engineers. And the objective there is to find a topic that pertains to at least two of the three participating uh, countries. So on October 5th, uh, we will have uh, Dr. George Judges uh, from the Shilish School of Engineering speaking on Muskrat Falls. This is a huge hydroelectric uh, facility in Newfoundland, I believe it is. So there will be a talk on this, so the lessons learned from this, uh, the construction of this facility. Then on October 19th, we will have a webinar organized by the Young Professionals Committee. So please mark your calendar. I'm sure there will be very interesting information there for students. Please take note. Uh, we talked about the cost of uh, participating in some of these things, but all CSE members who are in good standing, including students, of course, can attend the CSE Tech talk webinar at no charge. So this is also on offer if you become a student member. And as Pre uh, Vice President Gopal said, it is free to, to become a member at this time. And to become a CSE student member or to renew your membership, you can follow this link. I'll leave it up for a few seconds to allow you to hit the print screen button. So on that note, I think uh, we have done very well with our timing. I just want to thank you all for joining us today. If you do have questions about anything on students, young professionals, the CSCE, please feel free to contact any one of us. Uh, but again, I will also finish by saying that get engaged. Contact your local section chair and participate in the activities of the CSE sections. That way you will be able to expand your network. This is crucial for your transition from being a student member to a young professional and into the real world. So thank you very much once again for joining us today. Uh, have a great week. And we look forward to you joining this webinar series in the near future. Thank you very much.